Hey there, fellas. We'll be trying something interesting in this video. You'd recall how we extracted a pyrolysis oil in a previous video, and uh, yeah, on the surface it didn't look all that good. As fuel, it would only be suitable for, I don't know, a boiler plant or something. You probably wouldn't want to put that stuff into a car. But we did a bit of research, looked into how we could refine it, and ultimately we ruled that chemical purification is out of the question. As we're not exactly proficient chemists. But there is one method we could try using to clean it up. That we could use to extract the lighter fractions, um, that are more easily combustible. Now, we used a setup similar to what you see here in order to extract the crude in the first place, and someone from our team decided to uh, draw up a sketch of how it's supposed to look like. And on this drawing you can see a column, it's all good, but in our estimation, it seems to be geared towards a different purpose. And so what we'll do is set up a container for our synthetic crude, and the rest looks about the same as last time. We'll have the crude in here, it comes out through here, and then through a sort of coil that will be placed inside a container filled with cold water. From there it drips into some sort of receptacle, and the idea is that all of those lighter fractions will form condensation inside of this here tube. Well, at least that's what we think is gonna happen. Anyway, so it forms condensation and then drips down into this jar. This doesn't seem overly complicated, so let's do it. To me, it seems as if the simpler the setup, the better the end result. And so let's go ahead and put together the device and commence the refining of the synthetic crude. Treat it to the point where it becomes a uh, synthetic gasoline. Let's do this. Fuel extracted from tires versus pump gas, which is better? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Check this out. We were able to set up a machine of modest proportions. You got a tank that used to contain a refrigerant. Like Freon, or what other names does it have? It is obviously hermetically sealed. We've welded an inlet to it. And this is the cooler itself, which is a copper tube. That goes into a similar tank meant to contain a refrigerant, which is filled with tap water that's going to keep it all nice and cool to ensure proper condensation. And the tank where the evaporation is going to be occurring is placed onto a normal sort of stovetop. Over there we have a bit over 6 liters of liquid, which will fill the tank about halfway. And I reckon we got this. So let's fill the tank, fire this up, and hopefully drain... Wait, not drain, but rather use it to extract a better flammable liquid that will work as fuel. Let's get to it.
Okay, guys, it has cooled down, though the bottle has sort of imploded. We've got one and a half liters of the so-called synthetic gasoline, is that right? It is based on synthetic crude, after all. The color is good, doesn't make you feel as apprehensive about pouring it into the tank, because what it was based on looked super sketch. Now I suggest we try doing a simple comparison. This contains some regular old gasoline, 92 octane, nothing special. This contains, um, 6 cubic centimeters of it. Is the stopwatch ready? Let's see how it burns. We have done this before, so we'll have a look at the leftover residue, you ready? Here we go. So we're looking at regular gasoline burning. I see some black smoke. It's not gonna burn super clean with how much is in there. Doesn't have enough air, so it's sort of just burning. I've poured in too much, this is gonna take a while. Yeah, so if you look closely, you'll notice that there's only a tiny bit left at this point. Two minutes. 26 seconds. And we do see some. Obviously there will be residue. Also there's some grease, oil, or what is that? There isn't much left. But now let's pour a bit of that synthetic gasoline. That smell is just... Too bad the camera won't be able to pick that up. Same exact amount. Pouring it in. And here we go. That's a good burn from the looks of it. Is anybody noticing any changes? Yeah, I can also smell it. And there's more residue inside the bowl. It's already all black, which wasn't the case when the gasoline was in there. That was gradually making the cup darker, but here it happened momentarily. The smoke is carrying chunks of carbon, which there is more of overall. You can literally tell. Okay, well... That tells us that apparently it produces quite a bit more heat. We have a fractured bowl. Switch it off. What have we got? Oh my goodness. Why though? Looks like it isn't quite as quick to vaporize. Not as quick to burn out. I smell burnt rubber now. Now that we've burnt it, there is a strong scent of burnt rubber. What's left inside the bowl, though? Right, those are oils or what have you. I can't really tell. But the residue is definitely of a darker color. What we have established is that it burns well. So let's go ahead and empty the carburetor of regular gasoline, set up a supply of synthetic fuel, and uh, start the car if we even can. Yeah, let's see how it's able to run. Yeah, that's it. Right, so we've purged the carburetor. There's no more regular gas in there. Now let's pump in the synthetic stuff. There is a bit of sediment after it stood for a bit. Don't want to shake it up. Yeah, this smell, guys, it's not very pleasant. You give it a pump? Okay, fire it up and let's see what happens. It works. Give it some gas. Yeah, give it a good stab. It's revving weird. Pickup isn't too great. Well, yeah, the engine hasn't had enough time to warm up yet. 
but the important thing is it runs. As for the exhaust gases, well, uh, the smell is slightly different. It's as if it's running rich. But the cool thing is that uh, fired up. It starts and runs perfectly fine. Okay, let's pack up and head to the test track. 0 to 100 on 92 octane. Resetting the device. And let's see what it can do. Did a wheel spin. Show us what you got, come on. That was 100. And though this is an older Lada, right, so it's 5.9 to 60 Ks, 16.7 to 100. Okay, let's run it on the synthetic gasoline. Or in the synthetic gasoline. We made it out of synthetic crude, which makes it synthetic as well. Synthetic gasoline, first pull. Holy cow! For real? I can't see the results yet. So 0 to 60 kilometers an hour was 5.6. 0 to 100, 16.5 seconds. So it's even a bit quicker by a few tenths of a second. But we'd better go again, first time is never right. Here we go. I can't read the display. The car is wobbling quite a bit. So the 0 to 60 time is a consistent 5.9, 5.8 seconds. It only varies by a tenth. But the 0 to 100 time was 16 seconds flat now. I remember it being 17 the second time around. But this time it was 16 flat. You know what I think we should do? Let's get a liter of a regular old pump gas. Pour that into a bottle, hook that up, start the engine, get the gearbox into second, bring the revs up to about two and a half thousand, and see how far the car travels according to the race logic. See how far one liter gets us. Then once the regular gas runs out, we'll replace it with the fuel we extracted from the tires. We'll pour it in, start the engine, measure the distance using the device, and compare how far the car made it on regular pump gas and on the fuel we extracted from the tires. Let's get to it! Distance driven on 92 octane pump gas. So we have poured in a liter of conventional pump gas. Now I start the car and drive. Here we go. That is second. 2,000 RPM, 2,500 RPM. And we've stalled. Now we stop. Right, guys, we've traveled 8,300 meters which about corresponds with city fuel consumption numbers. If you ask me, it's not the worst result for a lot of them. Distance driven on synthetic gasoline. And here we go. 
And we're off. Oh, right, no need to shift from now on. I have brought the revs up and let's go. Eight thousand nine hundred. And we're done. I'm not going to keep pushing it. Though I could have uh, gotten it up to nine thousand. To nine kilometers. But this is an excellent result. Like, truly. So where does that leave us then? This was quite easy to extract, even with our basic equipment. The car drives perfectly fine. You saw how it accelerates. It was even a tiny bit better than on pump gas. As for how far the car was able to go, well, given that I was in second and turning 3000 RPM while calmly moving along, sort of imitating city driving, when running regular 92 octane pump gas the car was able to travel 8,300 and 40 give or take meters, when using the gasoline we extracted from tires, that brought the number up to 8,977 meters. So for driving you don't exclusively have to use gasoline made from crude oil, I mean, obviously tires are made using some form of crude oil products, but the point is you can set up a machine and use it to make this type of fuel. And that's all I got for you, watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. No, right, catch you later.